13th of April today and all of a sudden everything seems to have greened up at once but there are still trees and shrubs still to open oaks are a long way behind the silver birches and sallows that you can see behind me and sallow holds the key to this little video because I thought as we're now into the season of recording properly it's about time I did an update on some of the purple emperor lava that we've been looking at throughout the winter Well, it's been a few weeks since I did a, an update on any of the Purple Emperor lava that Nick and Samantha Brown and myself have been monitoring through the winter. And the news is that they started feeding, at least some have, where the trees are open. And they started within the last couple of weeks and progress is already being made. We have one here. And this, by the looks of this, is already in the process of molting to L4. They overwinter at L3, which is the third instar. And you can see where this one's been feeding either side of the midrib, while the larva itself rests at the end. That's very characteristic. It often forms a diamond shape at the end of the leaf. But they will wander. This one overwintered a little bit further down this particular stem and if I just carefully show you here took a few nibbles out before moving on to this shoot here where it spent most of its time. It does rest on a silken pad but this one it's already increased its size a lot, nice and plump, and will molt in a couple of days. It's quite a lengthy molt process for purple emperor larvas. Seems, seems it to me. So this is the first one we can look at. The next one, if it's there, won't look like this one. I haven't been here for three or four days and you can always see the difference in the foliage but the next purple emperor larva is a larva that when I saw it about a week ago looked distinctly unwell it was almost two-tone in colour with the front end being yellowish and the back end of the larva or the back half of the larva barely even being green it was always a funny colour this one throughout the winter very yellowish and from what I've seen quite untypical of purple emperor larva but what was especially worrying was that at the side of the head there was a black puncture wound at least it looks like a puncture wound and I expect when I look at this larva it's probably not even going to be there but there were two larva on this next tree one was the one that was overwintering in the old leaf scar and that disappeared a few weeks ago i looked on all the nearby branches and if it's relocated after a nice warm day then it's relocated a long way normally they don't they don't go too far when they relocate if they do relocate at all after over winter so there may well still be one lava on here that we know of but it's not going to be in the best of conditions well surprisingly our second larva is here it's moved it was at the side of this developing bud when i last saw it its color hasn't changed and it still looks very poorly to me but it has fed you can see how it's taken some out of that leaf there the injury if i can keep it still 
is at the side of the head on the top side of the head as we look at it the head obviously for those new to purple emperor larva is where those two slug like projections are on the left but you may well be able to make out the coloration greenish towards the back end it then goes into yellowish and where that wound is is now black this is not a healthy caterpillar it'll be interesting to see how this one does fare but all is not well here I think this is probably the hardest time really to look for purple emperor larva once they've started feeding and the leaves are only just opening up. This particular sallow is behind one that's next to it. That, the leaves are really quite large on that. I can see the shadow of the larva that I've just been looking at. And it's just on this branch that comes up here, but I don't think you'll see it. But I'm just looking for the side of any leaves that have been nibbled. I'm saying that's very difficult when the leaves are only just unfurling. Unfortunately, we've got another breezy day today, but fortunately, we have our third purple emperor. And this is one that I've featured several times during the course of the winter and the last time was a few weeks ago when this one had woken up from its hibernation and had relocated onto another branch but I think it's gone back to where it overwintered and it, it actually has because that pale area here that's the original pad of silk on which it overwintered, but it went from there, up this branch here, and then up this one, and sat at the end of this for a few weeks, but has gone back down here, back along the branch that it overwintered on, past its silken pad there, onto the very end growth and as you can see this one is within a few days of starting to molt into L4 it's not quite as large as the first one we looked at but a lovely lime green colour matches perfectly with the colour of the goat sallow leaf There were five on this tree. I'm going to have a look for some of the others, but we, as far as Nick and Sam and myself knew, we were down to one, and this is it. Well, some good news. In the process of looking casually for another larva of the five that were on this tree, I found one. It's there in the middle of the screen. And what's exciting is that this has already molted and this is L4. Now, first L4 larva, as far as I know, were reported the other day from down south from a site there. But this is L4 and, to confirm it, there is the molt and the leaf and the pad of silk on which it molted. So we've regained one on this tree, so there are now two as far as we know, I can't see Nick's mark on this one. I don't think it will be a new one. I think it's one that where the marker has probably come off. But we have an L4 purple emperor larva at Sherwood Forest. I'm pleased with that. It's nice to see that the malt's there. I don't think it's been out that long because they'll often eat the majority of the malt. So, we're back to two on this tree.
this sallow is particularly good for looking for lava from underneath that classic silhouette it's unmistakable it's almost like the silhouette of a slug but from underneath and early in the season when the leaves are really soft and almost a translucent green it makes finding or seeing the lava easier and I found one on this tree and what's especially excited me is that this tree last year about this time last spring we found four L4 ultimately L5 lava before they all suddenly disappeared for some strange reason all through the autumn or late summer and autumn we look for eggs we look for lava and look for lava continuously over the winter every time I walked past this tree and looked for lava couldn't find any however about 10 feet up above the camera I found one now this isn't going to be easy to film it's a good 10 12 feet above us you may well be able to see the horn light projections sticking out from that leaf nearest camera top left you can see how the other leaves have been eaten I'm so pleased with that all oh, my excitement has been tempered with great sadness on the videos that I tried to get showing the lava in very shaky footage something just didn't look quite right and so using the tripod and the phone I was able to bring the branch down and I know why it wasn't right it's because the lava has been predated get you in for a closer look this is a big shame but there are almost certainly all the lava on this tree well that was more or less the silhouette that I could see from underneath but when I did get some footage from above things didn't look right and I've been able to bring the branch down and that is why I don't know what's happened to this lava it's not really been predated it's just been mangled there's the lava's favoured pad of silk and this looks as though it was quite a large lava I think this was molten into L4 but something's had a go at it but I don't know what what a shame but it happens just the excitement went within the space of a couple of minutes the excitement of finding this on a tree that we've looked for lava on time and time again well what a mix of emotions this is I never thought an insect could do this apart from glowworms but the excitement of finding a lava on this tree in which searched all through the autumn and winter not finding a lava or an egg I then find a lava I then find that it's been predated however little more than a couple of feet away there were more feeding signs and we have another lava whether if I can adjust it it's here typical feeding sign sat on the end of the leaf there and this is L3 molt into L4 I can't believe it well what a a bittersweet day or visit here to Clipsdale Quarter and here in Blackpool Plantation started off looking at that first L3 lava that's molded into L4 
and looking really healthy and very very plump then finding the very poorly looking and sickly looking larva and it's not going to make it but finding surprisingly that it was on a leaf and had actually eaten some of that leaf then on to the only one remaining from the tree of five but after finding that surprisingly finding what is probably another one of the five but one that we'd lost no marker could be a new one that we'd missed in autumn but i think it's personally i think it's one of the five that were recorded on that tree by nick and samantha brownley and then finding that was l4 had recently molted that's the first l4 of the year this year in show of forest so then i decided to come down and check a tree which we've been checking every day and every time i'd gone past it we'd found no lava time after time after time after looking from july of last year and looking for eggs nothing no lava no eggs nothing and the reason probably being that the lava were higher up i still think there's more lava to be found on that tree and coming again in a week or so may well reveal them but they're probably going to be quite high up and i found that first lava excitement after finally finding one on that tree always a sense of achievement when you finally find something after you've been looking for it for so long but then great disappointment when on closer inspection it proved to not look right and indeed it wasn't right it was dead and had been severely mangled and partly predated but then after the sadness of that within a couple of feet there was another larva a healthy larva so overall i have to say that this visit to sherwood forest in terms of purple emperor larva was especially successful and goes to prove that the invertebrate recording is so unpredictable and can give you highs but it can also give you lows too